Hello everybody, it's me Ross and welcome back to another edition of the Kings of Anglia Fan Social where town fans have their say, all things town. Well, what a relief. The first win of the season has been secured away at Lincoln City. So some positive stuff to talk about on the pod last week. There was a bit of uh, negativity going around and I'm sure it was a tough listen, but I'm sure this week it's going to be positive. It's the third helping of the Kings of Anglia podcast this week. Uh, of course, we've had two Fantastic main pods. This is the one to finish off the week. I'm joined by five fine gentlemen in Dazza, David, Segs, Dan and Matt, aka Bono, aka View from U2, all the other nicknames he is required. And we're going to talk about the Lincoln game right now. I'm going to go over to Dazza first. And um, you were there, my friends. I saw you once again with your good old son, Lewis. And uh, yeah, your takeaways from the first win of the season. Selena made his return. Macaulay Bond keeps scoring. We got a clean sheet with your boy Vaz. Oh, my boy Vaz, yeah. Well, thanks very much for having me on again. Uh, hello, everyone, and everyone on the pod. Um, yeah, Saturday was really enjoyable. Really enjoyable. The traffic wasn't on the way. The traffic was rubbish for everyone travelling there. But um, yeah, obviously fantastic to get the first win of the season. Um, as it, as the cliche goes, it was a game of two halves. I thought we were totally dominant in the first half and Lincoln were very negative. They were just sitting back. And then um, second half was just about being solid and digging in. And um, the, num of, uh, the number of blocks that, that Burgess and Edmondson put on, and predominantly Burgess, was just fantastic. So... Um, yeah, really gritty, solid display in the second half. And like you say, Selena coming back. No, I don't think any of us expected him to be uh, be starting. It was nice to see him in the squad, but a start was a real surprise. And um, I didn't quite appreciate. He's a nasty git. If you watch him off the ball, there was one moment, I don't know if anyone else spotted it, he grabbed one of their players around the neck and like spun him. So the guy fell on the floor. And no one seemed to notice. So I was like... It's like what <laughs> he's going to get in trouble for that, and um, no, it all kind of went um, went through. So yeah, obviously he's got a touch and a, he can see a pass that we haven't had before. So he's a quality, quality player. But he's I didn't quite appreciate how nasty he was. So he'll he'll definitely add a bit of edge to us. And then I was really pleased for 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 Vass as well to to be called upon with a, after the injury to Walton and. He didn't have any, you know, to be fair, there was no amazing saves he had to make. But everything he did, he did solid. He came out for crosses. He punched every shot that was on here. He gathered. He didn't fumble anything. His kicking was solid. So I was really pleased for him to, you know, first clean sheet of the season to be from him. So um, just, yeah, big relief. Fantastic to get there. I've got to say the, the support from the crowd was amazing. Um so, um, yeah, really good support all the way through. Uh, you know, just uh, it was it was just great to to be there cheering the boys on. So, um, yeah, I drove home a very happy boy. Yes, many town fans were happy to get the first one of the season. David was that man too. Uh, he was fuming last week after the <laughs> two defeats. Um, but we had a nice cuddle at full time in Lincoln, didn't we, David? On the main pod, I said you're a very cuddly man. I hope you're okay with that. But, um, oh, absolutely. Yes. Your, your takeaways there, my friend, from the first win of the season. Lincoln has always been an interesting place to go. We've seen five free defeats. We've seen late winners. But uh, finally, we get a win to celebrate. Um, the first takeaway is the, the Lincoln staffing at their bars is shocking. They had one poor bloke. And they, the queue went right the way down and back out the other door. One bloke trying to serve all of that. It was nonsense. Um, so Lincoln need to employ some more bar staff. The game, yeah, all of the things that I've been grumbling about and the reason why I've been quite, I mean, yeah, I'm negative after a game if we've lost. It doesn't mean that that's just the nature of it and your immediate reaction, that, that's why game day is so good, isn't it? It's because it, it catches the your immediate visceral reaction. Give it a couple of hours, a couple of pints, and then you can calm down and look at it with more due reflection. I imagine that the post-match interview for managers is pretty much the same. Is that immediately they just sort of go, no, I don't want to talk to you. Go away. Um, <laughs> and so on. Um, I was uh, very concerned by the fact that there was no fight, um, you know, against um, West Ham or against Bolton. And we did. We Against Lincoln, we addressed that. Um, we fought and we fought really hard. 
Um, Lincoln, in the second half, they looked fitter than us. They kept going, and we, we were dead on our feet, I think. And that, that remains a concern for me, is the fact that we fade. But they didn't knock... I mean, I think Andy or Stu said in the um, part of the start of the week, a lot of it was just hurling a ball into the box and hoping something fell in the right place. It wasn't... There was no strategy to it. it, it if... If Lincoln had been a different side, they would have been bringing on that um, Nicola Zigic, wouldn't they? Just sort of, it, sort of bring on the eight-foot bloke for the last 10 minutes and hope something comes off. So, but the but the Ipswich of the first few games, we would have folded with that. And that, that for me, is, is one of the big things, is the fact that we fought and we threw our body on the line. We didn't just wilt and fall over. The other big positive for me is that we address those issues which have been so apparent the fullbacks there wasn't a gap behind them you know they weren't sort of hanging around trying to be wingers they were being fullbacks and doing that job which is their primary it's lovely to have a fullback who bombs forward and does exciting things and we can all love them and go oh whoa. but actually the first job of a fullback is to defend i remember people saying well andy um, not andy co um who was who was the Arsenal defender? Arsenal England. Andy Cole. Ashley. Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole. I remember reading an article in the Guardian some time ago where they were saying, "Well, he's not very good at defending, but he should be in England's side because he's this, that, and the other." You know, he's a fullback. His first job is to defend. If you can't defend, not. So I was really pleased by that. Delighted for Danassian because I've been banging his, you know, on about Danassian being inside for about three years. Um, really solid, and as Darren says, you know, Selena, and I think Selena made a huge difference to Fraser. Um, that was one of the things that I was really pleased about there. Fraser looked twice the player we've seen so far. I really enjoyed the fact that Selena was playing in the centre, but then he was on the left, and Fraser was on the left, but then he was in the centre, and it was difficult to pick them up because of that, and that that movement. And he, he brought out a player in Fraser that we haven't really seen so far. Although statistically, he's created more chances than anybody else, apparently, in League One, um, which I was astounded when I read that stat. But um, apparently, that was even, that was the case before Saturday's game. I was really pleased. It's, it's, not, it's not the um, finished article. It's, I'm not going overboard and yet. My wild optimism saying we're going to stroll the league yet. Perhaps I was over the top before in my negativity, maybe, but I think it was born of a sensible place. I think it was, it, it wasn't just a knee jerk thing, but equally, I'm not going to get try not to get carried away with it after one win. When we beat Sheffield Wednesday and Doncaster, then then we're the greatest thing since sliced bread. But at the moment, it was it was steps in the right direction. Really pleased that they addressed the things that needed addressing finally, and the fight. I love a bit of fight. There's a, if, if we had strolled five nil, okay, I love that, great. But there's a, there, there's just something wonderful about sort of with withstanding an onslaught, even if it's a mismatched one, and coming away with a one nil and things. There's just something lovely about that. You, you you really feel it. Definitely, well said as always, my friend. And yeah, we're not getting too carried away. We've just won one game in League One after a while, um, but we've got to be buzzing about it. Finally getting that win and yeah. Segs. Um, the summer was like no other, and uh, we finally got that win. I'm sure, like all of us, you were just relieved at, at full time when that whistle went, and we finally got the win. Seven added minutes. Don't know where they got that from, but your takeaways from the game, my friend. Yeah, um, I enjoyed the day. It was a good day. Um, good to finally get a win away from home again. I can't remember the last time I saw one of those. I think it was Gillingham. Um, so, yeah, it was a, a good day in terms of that. The traffic wasn't too bad, like Dazza said. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> it was fine for me. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, that's your the, the game itself. I went into it um, want, uh, predicting a one 0 and they give me what I kind of expected and wanted to see. I wanted to just see us get back to basics and just show a bit of fight, like David said, and you know just prove to us that we can get that win and we can build on that next Saturday. Um, so I was pleased with that. I thought Danashian was really good again. He's he's made it hard for KVY to get back on the team now. To be honest. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, he's, he's showing us what some of us already knew. Um, admittedly, 
I never had any trouble dashing. I was kind of a bit flabbergasted as to why Lambert always sort of dropped him out. Obviously, he did something whilst he was at Villa. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> that's, you know, it's one of those things. And now he's got a chance to show it to Cook and he's got a chance to sort of keep his place in the team now after last week's performance. So sort of pleased for him. Burgess and um, Edmondson did well at the back. Burgess did really well when he moved to the left when Colson had to go off, um, unfortunately. But Burgess did a good job there and it, it's, we, we kept a clean sheet. So no moans really. Um, and like David said about Selena and Fraser, I noticed that too, how they were sort of swapping over most of the game and that sort of added something different. And it's nice to see nice to see Selena start and it provides us with a, another attack and threat going forward for the season. Um, hopefully he stays fit for us and you know, it works out for him. I'm hoping that Edwards will be fit for next week. Um, and, you know, even if he comes off the bench, um, keep Fraser and Selena to start him off and then always bring Edwards on if need be. And then obviously Bond as well. I'd like for him to get his fourth goal in three games. Um, obviously, yeah, uh, Ipswich boy. But, yeah, um, I kind of feel like that's a permanent deal waiting to happen. But we'll see. Definitely. And um, that, of course, we had the, the non story Dazza said, I quote Dazza, about the recall option from Mark War, you know, Warburton already saying different things about that. But uh, I'm sure he doesn't want to go back. He wants he wants to belong here. And um, I want to go over to Dan and talk about the game as well. I know you weren't there, but of course, you know, reading it, probably listening to it at home, just hoping and praying for that first win. And we got it. Um, what's your takeaways from it? And Macaulay Bond, that is the next question as well. Like, do you think we can get him permanently? Yeah, talk about Bond after. I did actually, I was actually, the thing was, I was actually at a game on Saturday. And it was the first time I hadn't followed Ipswich on a Saturday for three years. And it was brilliant. And I'll tell you why, because I was at Fulham. Some of you might know, my boy's a Fulham fan. You know, and it, it was Fulham versus Reading. Kids were a quid, took Theo to Fulham, took a knock on Lincoln away. The match started and I'd said, we're not following the game. Turn the phones off. Got to half time, checked the score. It was just like, right, come on, get in. One nil. Second half turned on as we were leaving the big end behind the goal at Craven Cottage. Fulham had just lost at home to Reading 2-1 and a shot defeat. And I was fist pumping going, yes, in the Fulham end. And I was getting a lot of stares because when that score came through, I mean, most of that second half, I was watching Alexandra Mitrovic on the pitch and I was thinking of Edmondson and Burgess just headering it out, headering it out, headering it out. Because that's, that's all, that's, you know, before the game. When Cook said, I think after the Bolton defeat, he said, this club needs to find its soul. You know, that was a big, big telling comment because we've been soulless for quite a while. And it was kind of like you realise what a back to the wall win does. Because in some ways, it's quite easy in a way. You just say, right, you just got to fight for the badge. And clearly, that's what they did. So it was fascinating listening to you guys just then talking about the game because I've not really heard anyone from it that was at the game. You just see the one nil. I got, it was telling though, I got quite a few, few comments coming in actually from, um, from mates and that saying you'd finally broken the duck and got your win. I, th I think a lot of people were looking at us on Saturday. I think after that Bolton game, a lot of people were questioning the club, questioning the players. I, I kind of wasn't, but I can understand why a lot of people were. And um, over, overwhelming relief and um, brilliant on a Sunday morning to wake up to a win. It just makes it makes a massive difference. It really does. I know it sounds silly at the age of 48 to still be acting like I'm 13, but it does. It was made the Sunday much better. And as, as for Bond, and I, you know, I think, um, yeah, I think uh, he's not going to get much of a look in at QPR. With the second top scorers in the championship, they got Dykes, they got Austin, they got Willock, they got Andre Gray. Um, Warburton gets his teams attacking. You know, I think I think the way you know, I don't know if Bond's championship quality, but he's definitely League One quality. And I don't think the finances are going to be a problem because we're paying his wages in the League One. So you know, he's hit the ground running for sure. It'd be lovely to, and for all the reasons he's an Ipswich boy, it'd be lovely to see him at the club. But uh, maybe you know, I'd be interested to hear what the others think about Bond. I think what he's also done is he's he came into the club and he was on the level with Piggott, Norwood, and Bond. And to be fair to Bond, he's won that little battle and he's the first choice striker now. So fair play to him, you know. More, you know, and that great. When I saw the goal, I don't know what it was like to be there, but 
hell of a goal on Saturday, I thought. Brilliant cross from Coulson as well that I've seen from the highlights, you know. And actually, for and I'll just finish up, when, you know, you read the app, like exactly what David said about managers being interviewed after the game. And Michael Appleton sounded the most bitter man in the world, you know, moaning and moaning about Bond's push. But actually, when you watch that back, the two defend the two link defenders near Bond weren't moaning at all. Do you know what I mean? It was just like a quality quality cross and a great head though. And it was just like, oh yeah, more more power to his arm. So well chuffed. And massive respect to everyone that, that went. Because that's that's good numbers. What was it? Yeah. Fifteen hundred at Lincoln away when you're third bottom and haven't won a game? Not a lot of clubs would do that. So brilliant. Yeah, seventeen or eighteen hundred, I think actually. It's at least it, right? yeah, you know, yeah, when, yeah. when you when you you know, you're third bottom without a win. You know, the fans have stuck with the players and the players finally paid us back. Mm. We're massive. That's why. And as you said, you know, waking up on a Sunday morning, I've been buzzing all week, just finally getting a win. Um, you put that, you know, the town hat on. You're like, yes, I'm proud to say we won a game. And like my mum texted me and said, they finally won a game, did they? Um, so that's fantastic. And I want to go over to you, Bono, next to wrap up the Lincoln win um, and sort of segue into... The Mark Ashton celebration, of course, he was a never very happy man. Um, all of his hard work in the summer is finally, well, we got a win. Um, but yeah, your thoughts on, on the win and um, we'll then segue into Ashton. What's your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, just just absolutely and, and, and long overdue, really. So I was, I was working away. I was on the south coast uh, on Saturday. I was surrounded by lots and lots of uh, Portsmouth and Cambridge United fans uh, on Saturday. And um, yeah, it was just it was just great. I mean, like I said, long overdue, and it's nice to see the boys playing. Uh, how kind of kind of close to how we actually think um, they can. Um, obviously, I've 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 been an advocate of give them time to gel, which is kind of one of the most annoying phrases uh, this season for anybody that's anything to do with Ipswich Town. But I think. Anybody with it, with like a like a modicum of common sense, would realise that that a whole new team kind of needs a few games to to kind of get their shit together. Excuse my French. And just seeing like Selena just suddenly like announced. I mean, I, I think we all were kind of under the impression that he was going to be announced and and kind of put in like gradually, like a few sub appearances, and then maybe towards Christmas we start to see him. A little bit more but to see him start when the team was announced at two o'clock on saturday was just like it's like holy shit like it's on you know unfair and, thomas. Um, yeah and uh, unfair thomas funny say that again that's about unfair on thomas well indeed indeed and uh yeah it's just but no it's just i mean a win i've always said a win is a win is a win but lincoln you know defeated player finalist <coughs> last year it's not a it's not a result to be sniffed at. I mean, I've personally, I've got a soft spot for Lincoln because I'm from Lincolnshire originally, as my strange accent will attest to. But they're not a bad side. And, you know, we, we kind of shut them out, really. You know, to see uh, Vaz Hatke in goal again and, you know, playing as good as Darren says he is was just was just absolutely fantastic. And, and, uh, and Bon, well, you know, was it a push? Wasn't it a push? I don't care. You know, like like Dan said, the defenders around him, they weren't complaining. This is football. This is this is this is League One. You know, you, you get a push, you get an elbow, you get a kick, you know. I, I think the technical it, phrase is he was handed off. I think that's the I like were, that. I like yeah, that. That's he was, that's he new, was yeah. hand, hand, I think that's I think it's a rugby turn, isn't it? When it's you like, like, rugby, is it? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that, that <laughs> <laughs> it's like get away i'm heading this and i'm absolutely That's smashing it, yeah. it into the top corner this but is my space go away let's yeah. get on let, let's get on to I the key my space. let's <laughs> did you say my space <laughs> my god it's like 1998 all over again <laughs> I wish like, you would. Oh, god, yeah. yeah me too me yeah. too but uh let's let's get on to the king i'm not talking about uh morsi i'm talking about the boy, Mark Ashton. Can we call him the boy? We can't. He's like the boss, and he's like the gaffer. He's like the proper gaffer. <laughs> Mark, 
Mark, Mark Ashton doing his like craze flipping get out of the way or I'll kill you type flipping celebration. How how good was that? I mean, like when I when I saw your video, Ross, I think I was on the train back into Waterloo from um from Portsmouth and South Sea on, on Saturday. And I just saw him just like ah I mean to be honest, like it, let's let, let's face it, if you were the CEO of, of a team that's been given like a load of shit, which we have been which our, our expectations have been raised. It's like, we're just going to just like throw our massive budget because Ed Sheeran has sponsored us half a billion pounds this year, but we can spend whatever the F we like. And you'd be given like, you just like the keyboard warriors have just like scowled out. It's like, oh, cook needs to go. We're rubbish. And it's like, yeah, all right, dickhead. And they're like, it's like, like this overpouring of emotion. I just think like Mark Ashton just epitomizes how, 99.9 percent .9 of the fans have just felt it's like fucking get in there you know and i want I mean, to see I, him do it i want to see him do it at portman road you know what i mean and i'm amazed he didn't split I, he didn't split those matalan trousers that he's got on because you know i don't think they're from matalan <laughs> no no I, just, I just i just i just yeah i mean he i mean we um he was like close to tears i think you know he just he could not control I mean, he must have brushed past you, Ross, you know, with your amazing camera work to run up and down the, 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 the gimbal. game. You know. Hashtag gimbal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you need one of those. Um, but, yeah, he was – he was veins popping out on his forehead. You know, he was really – he was really feeling it. So, um, yeah, it's nice to see. I mean, it's – that was how we all felt, I think, at that time. So it's nice to see some personality and some character – from upstairs as well as, you know, on the pitch and off the pitch. So, and I was saying to the boys before that I, I, I you know, I've probably been to more away games in my life than I have home games because of how long I've lived away from Ipswich. But I've, I've never known a game where we've stayed so long after the final whistle and we're still singing. You know, it was still like 10 minutes after. I mean, to be fair, as David said, we couldn't actually get out. But the, um, to all just, we were all just, every fan there was, we're still giving it that you know singing and mark ashton was had a song and we were all singing his name and it was um yeah it was a real surreal bizarre moment but but one that felt right at the time i mean he may look back now and think yeah i shouldn't probably have done that that was a bit you know should have been a bit more controlled but that but that was that was kind of why right at that why, moment in time why would you think that it's been a, it's a fresh new start a fresh new a club that's going somewhere hopefully there's, there's no, need to, no need to regret it I mean, yeah, let's, let's 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 face it. Mark Ashton inspired me to get to get onto Canva Pro and like mock up that flipping weird like George Romero flipping Hail to the King baby thing that I, that I did, which is a film that kind of like no one really has heard of, but <laughs> hey, it, it it got retweeted by a load of horror fans over to like quarter of a million people over the world. But hey, you mm. know it's all good. It's all good. I'm, I'm, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. what Bono's all about, baby. Niche, baby, niche. <laughs> it's like he had the potential that to go really badly wrong, didn't it? Like a middle-aged man running down the pitch wearing a suit. Um, but he, he's got a bit of class about him, isn't he? Um, I'm, yeah. I'm personally someone that I prefer to not see owners of or directors of football. Um, you know, I prefer to hear from them. Yeah, you'd have loved um, it if you were there, Dan. Uh, you, know, you would but, have loved it. You would have loved it. Well, yeah, you know what? When I saw it, I thought, yeah, I could imagine. And I kind of saw it. And I thought, do you know what? It's a bit weird, but he's under pressure as well. Like he's got, he, he, you know, he's done a great job in the transfer market. But he's got though. He knows he's got the Americans looking at him, and you know, he he's under a bit of pressure. And I think it, I think it was a big, big win. And uh, also, we've had. 10 years of an owner who's not given a shit. He's not even, he wouldn't, Marcus Evans would not have gone, gone to Lincoln away. Not even the CEO would have gone to Lincoln away. So, in a way, Ashton can do the smallest things and it's more engagement than we've had for 10 years. So, you know, fair play to him. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think he's good. I, mean, I, I, was, I thought it was weird. The more I thought about it, I thought, no, fair play to him. Not every week, hopefully, but Fair play. I think it's unusual. And I get why, yeah. you know, I mean, besides the fact that um, 
fans of a certain other club are just you know they're they're, they're sort of obviously not, nothing much going on down in the west country at the moment so they need need to keep an eye out on uh, more interesting things going on elsewhere but true and for whatever reason they're salty about i mean his departure or whether it you know there's, there's all sorts of things you don't know because you're not a fan but i i get why from the outside it looks unusual and it is unusual because normally a chief executive is sitting um eating a canapé and sniffing prosecco up in the um soft seats but then again it, and i thought it was at the time it was unusual but it wasn't I didn't have a problem with it, but I thought, well, it's unusual to have such a high profile thing and that passion things. But on the other side of that, that's exactly actually what I want. It pisses me off in a big way when um, you've got, I mean, I, I sat up in the executive, in the um, director's box once when Francine won a um, competition. And you couldn't jump around and you couldn't swear at referees. And yes, you had a comfy seat. And yes, you had Terry Butcher on one side of you and, and that sort of thing. But you had to be polite and you know you, you score a goal and you just sort of like clap gently good show yeah and it's sort of like no that, that's that's a load of toss football's about the passion football's about having a rant after you've lost football's about um two and a half years later and your rant against peterborough is still turning up on tiktok which it wasn't even on to start with <laughs> and it's sort of like um forever immortalized david and, and forever and I, I immortalized want, I, I, I want my manager and I want my players. That's why we love players, you know, um, a walk or something like that, who, who wears their heart on the sleeve. That's what we love about those players. What we love about certain managers is that same thing. And what I can't stand about um, press conferences very often is they just dead bat it all. And I know that's because it's covering their asses. But why do we like Holloway, for instance? Is because his press conferences go off on random tangents and he answers questions properly. So, given that's what I really like, I want somebody who's honest. I want somebody who's passionate. I want it out in the field. I want it in the dugout. So, why shouldn't I want it in the executive box as well? And maybe next time Francine wins a competition, then I can stand up and shout a little bit if, if I'm up there with her. So, yeah, unusual, but really good. Yeah, I mean, um, just to just to mention something else as well, just really quickly. Um, obviously, this was the first game uh, since uh, Paul Cook's father had died, and so it was good. You know, the players mentioned it. You know, it was nice to see them going out and, you know, maybe realizing, uh, you know, how important these things are and and supporting the manager. So, um, yeah, that was good. And it, I don't know who watched. If you've all watched the interview with Paul Cook afterwards, you know he, uh, you know, it was yeah. a bit of a uh, I'm surprised that the um, the interviewer carried on, you know, because he clearly, Paul was pretty upset. You know, he was uh, close to tears or, you know, certainly watery eyes, you know, when he was pointed up to this, to heaven to see his, um, to, you know, about his dying, his dad. And uh, yeah, then he carried on asking him questions about the, the game. But yeah, good to see that from, from Paul and good, to see the, good that the lads went out and did it for him. And he's kept quite quiet about it, Cook, isn't he? I don't think he's yeah, mentioned it yeah, once. Yeah. Everyone else that has mentioned it, and he looked yeah. horrendous. Like, after that Bolton defeat, he looked in yeah. a world of pain and West Ham. So uh, I think it was nice just to finish on that before you talk segs, but I think it's mm. nice that Cook was up north and can go spend time with his family after that yeah, win. So, yeah. really, let the players celebrate and he can nip off. That's a fair yeah. play to him. Ideal. And um, yes, yeah, Segs, over to you. Um, just quickly end with a Mark Ashton, then I'll get you to segue into um, Can Count Kick On and look at the upcoming five games and uh, your thoughts on those. Can Count Kick On, did you say? Can Can oh, Kick I'm, On. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Right, yeah. understand. Um, I found it unusual when I saw him running out. I had like, a clear vision from where I was coming down because it was sort of like, in line with that um, that, that sideway line. Might be quite, 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 you know. But, um, he was walking running down there as soon as I was kind of beginning to leave. So that was kind of an unusual sight to see the CEO coming down there and running towards the fans. But no, I, I enjoyed it. Um got no problem with it. If he wants to embrace that, then go for it. Um, he's obviously had a bit of a pass at Bristol City. He obviously sort of handed him out in a way. So to actually have some, have some fans who are enjoying having him and after the work he's done in the summer, why not embrace it and 
sort of enjoy it. Um, it was nice as well after the game when after we did game day, he walked past us. He actually took, he spent a little bit of time talking, not not long, but he took, spoke a bit and then carried on his way. So you know, it's it's nice they actually had time to just say something to us before departing, which is nice. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's good to see. Unusual, but I liked it. I've got no problems with it. Um, very, very different after the past tenure that we had. I mean, they, <laughs> you would never see Evans or or Clegg or anyone like that done that with us. So, um, sort of a fresh, fresh air in a way, I guess, for us as town fans to have something like that now after ten years of silence, um, which it which it was to be fair. And then in terms of the next five games, um, I'm quietly confident. I'm not I'm not not going to be sort of too confident, but I feel like we we finally turned it around now. I think if, if you know. If, with Cook's dad dying, like we said, I think if the, if the players can sort of kick on with the the one nil victory that we had last weekend and sort of carry on doing it for Cook and his and his dad, because um, obviously he needs it himself. Like Dan was saying, he did look dreadful after that Bolton game. Um, so he, you know we we need to keep on lifting now and keep pushing on, get the pressure off him a bit because there has unfortunately been a bit of pressure put on him, um, which in my eyes isn't needed. I know he's had last season. You know, last season was different. It's we've got new players now. We've got a whole turnaround of squad. Um, it's time to move on and look at this season and forget last season. In my eyes, we've we've got the one 0 win at Lincoln. Um, I feel like we'll probably get a point at least on Saturday, and then move on to to Doncaster, who are bottom of the league. I think aren't they from from we? So you know, it's potentially a, a decent win there if we if we fuck our ideas up for that game, and then. Um, Accrington, which uh, first time being there, I'm um, looking forward to going. I'm like Daz has said a bit like that with that game. I'm looking forward to the weekend more than it. You know, the weekend's going to be a decent weekend, but the game I'm not quite sure on yet. I have to wait and see what happens the next two games to decide and predict for that one. Um, so a point, a point again. You know, it'd be a, a decent result from there. And obviously Shrewsbury and Cambridge, we've got to win those, win those two. So sort of eight points, I think I said there, haven't I? Eight points out of fifteen. I'd want more, want more, but you know, eight points is a minimum. I think out of those five games for me, um, to push on the season and start getting up there where we need to be for the end of the season. It's, it's not, a, it's not a sprint. Um, it's a marathon. So, so as long as we can sort of start basing our, basing our performances down and get consistent, um, that'll be decent enough for me. And also, we've got Morsey coming in on Tuesday, which will be a big, big. Plus for us, um, I know it's a lot of pressure putting on his shoulders, but I do feel like um, once he comes into the squad, that will be a big lift to the squad. And hopefully we can carry on a decent decent run up from there. Definitely. And uh, Dazza, over to you. Um, five games coming up. Um, a lot of them are at home. Only two away games um, in October. Um, so it's time for us to maybe make Portman Road a fortress as it has been before. And, you know, 21... I think probably 21, 22,000 could be at Portman Road on Saturday against Sheffield Wednesday. So that's going to be a fantastic atmosphere. Um, what are you thinking out of these next five games? Um, yeah, this Saturday is going to be a big game. I was at, I had a quick look at Wednesday and I was absolutely delighted to see that um, their, their last few away games haven't been very good. They got absolutely battered by Plymouth. Uh, they got beat by, I've now forgotten the name, Fleetwood. Someone, Morecambe, Morecambe beat them. Um, and they drew um, the last away game. But I I did do it. I did a bit of homework for you, teacher. I'm glad you did that because I, I didn't know that. I hadn't been really looking into that. So I'm more confident for Saturday now already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, But I watched the highlights and I watched the extended highlights of one of the games. And all three games, they absolutely battered the other team at, crosses into the box through balls. Barry Bannon is an absolute nightmare for us. You know, he's such a good player. Um, you know, they could, if they'd have won both of those games, three nil, no one would have been surprised because they absolutely battered him, but somehow they've lost, <laughs> they've lost the games, but they look pretty weak on crosses and free kicks and stuff. That's where, I mean, it's no surprise. That's where most goals are kind of scored from, but that's where, all, that's where they conceded most of their goals. But in terms of the next five, I kind of thought we might draw, but having seen us win and a proper tough ground out win and the Sheffield Wednesday are not in the best form away from home, um, I think we're going to win. I think we'll win. And then uh, Doncaster at home, I think we win that. 
then the Accrington away is a that's a sticky not that's a that's a tough game I think it's they're a tough they're a tough team to play so I think we might draw and then you know home to Shrewsbury could beat them you know why not and then away to Cambridge so um I mean, all of these games are winnable. We'll just see. I mean, we're not going to win all of them, he says. But who knows? You know, we'll probably... I'm hoping we get at least three wins. Let's go for three wins out of those next five. And then that would be that would be acceptable, I think. And as we start to sort of build some momentum. Now, this could be a still question to you, David, but um, would you be happy with three wins or do you want to win all these games? I'd be content with three wins in hindsight. Um, I wouldn't have gone as far as to say I'd be happy with three wins. No, um, if the three, if those five games were against uh, Portsmouth, Sunderland, Lincoln, Accrington, and um, Rotherham, then yeah, three wins. I'd be be happy with that. But with the best one in the world, Doncaster, and I'm surprised Doncaster at the bottom. I thought they'd be doing better than that, but Doncaster, a bottom. We're at home. Um, Sheffield Wednesday got relegated. Their fans weren't happy in, in the close season with either how they got there or their transfer business. Um, they're a team very much in transition, I think, and not in the best place. I know because I've, I've got a soft spot for Sheffield United, then I know that Sheffield, fan, Sheffield Wednesday fans are not overwhelmingly optimistic about the season. You know, they're, they're, most of the predictions were that they do well to make the playoffs. Um, so we should be winning that one, and we're at home. Accrington, Accrington's the trickiest one because they're so physical. You know, we, we were we were lucky last season to get. You know, it was in that little um, purple patch, wasn't it? Just just before Cook took over, but it, it we were lucky there because they are physical and we get we get bullied. So, Accrington and Rotherham are the two game two games that I I think that we could easily come unstuck. And sure, if we are serious about promotion, and we should be, given the players we've got, given our resources, given the fact that we're sodding Ipswich down and we get twenty thousand crowds and so on, if we are serious about promotion, not saying top six, because I've always had a problem with saying top six, because that's accepting you're not going to be the top of the table. You need to be aiming for the top. If we're serious about promotion, beating Shrewsbury at home ought to be just the benchmark of basic, really. Mm. Um, because Shrewsbury, are, I'm sure, are a well-run club. I'm sure they're all sorts of lovely things, and I'm sure their fans love them. But with the best one in the world, their resources just aren't there. You know, really well done to them for being a mid-table League One side, but that's the pinnacle because of their resources, and that's unfortunate in the... You know, it's the same with Accrington. Accrington's in a fantastically well-run club. I love their chairman. You know, the manager has been there for ages, and he's, he creates a really good side, and the players move on. But Accrington's in the middle of the northwest, and there are about a thousand clubs within two hundred yards of each other. There's no way they they're going to be able to go. It's like Burton getting into the championship; they're punching above the weight. We ought to be doing something with all of those. I. I see absolutely no. I'm, I'm being, I'm being realistic. So I'm going to predict a draw against Accrington, but the others are wins. Anything less than that, and I'm going to be going well. Pfft, really, you know, you, you've got Sheffield Wednesday in transition. We're at home. We've just come off a win. You know, we ought to be on a high. The only downside is if it's the crowds over twenty thousand, we tend to go tits up and all go horribly wrong as soon as we get a big crowd. Everybody gets really excited and goes, "Oh, it's going to be a big crowd." It's like you know. It's like West Brom a few years ago. It's going to be a big crowd. It's going to be great. And then it all goes horribly wrong because so let's hope we can break that one. That's my only little caveat is crowd over 20,000 and it all goes horribly wrong. But Wednesday at home, we should beat that. Doncaster, bottom of the table. Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury and Cambridge. They've, I mean, it's one, it's Cambridge. Two, we're taking probably more fans to Cambridge than they've got. And three, it's Cambridge. And they've just been promoted. So, yeah, at least 13 points. Here you go, Cambridge, David. Jack no. Lancaster hat-trick. No. 
No, I, I'm not. I'm not going to Cambridge. I'm, I'm rationing. I, w I really want to go to Accrington. Um, most of the games I've got on my list are um, further afield: um, Accrington, Lincoln, Bolton, Morecambe, Shrewsbury. Um, those ones. I didn't put, put Cambridge on the list because I thought well, there's no chance of getting a getting a ticket because it's close and everybody's going to want one. Then there were quite a lot of tickets, and I thought, oh, I could do. And I thought, no, stick to the list I've got. Um, and I'm at the moment struggling with not going to Accrington, which I really want to do. But financially, um, because it's so close to Lincoln, I'm just struggling with the cost of the ticket plus the petrol there and back and everything. I'll probably succumb and just go bollocks to the money. But um, <laughs> at the moment, I'm, uh, my bank account is winning in the in the Battle of Accrington. Well, if you do go, make sure you don't go through Huntington again. <laughs> Well, hopefully the A14 is not going to be shut this time, is it? So, um, over to then Dan um, and Cambridge just beat Portsmouth, so uh, Cambridge yeah. could be a could be a tricky one, but we'll, we'll find out. Um, but yeah, Dan, five big games, a big statement would be made if we can beat Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday. We'll get into our predictions and the preview of Sheffield Wednesday in a, in a second. But uh, what do you reckon for the the upcoming five games? Yeah, well. But I've always preached that I never get too low or never get too high. But we're gonna we're gonna win four of the next five, and I'm with David on this. Uh, at, you know, um, Wednesday, yeah, I, we'll get to the previews later. But we, get, you know, like David said, I'm sorry, but you know, we got we, we have to beat Shrewsbury um, and Doncaster at home if we're going to be serious about going up and I, th I think we will I think this is also based on the fact that our perform that by one shocking performance against Bolton the performances haven't been absolutely horrendous they haven't been absolutely horrendous in every game we've played there's been something to hang on to which bore out in the win at Lincoln we're not reinventing the wheel here and we're getting players back so we're going to have we're going to have more C at Accrington Right, and um, that's gonna, you know, that's a classic choose, you know, northern game, dig in and get on with it. But I, I you know, you do look at our, we've got players coming back, we've got Edwards coming back, we've got Morsi coming in, we've got more time on the training ground. Sheffield Wednesday is going to be a cagey one, but they haven't won in their last three games. There's their mum, there's grumbles of discontent up there, they're just like we were when we came down Wednesday, you know, fair, you know, they're a bit like, um. They're expecting to do a bit better, and um, we don't. We know it doesn't really work out like that. And I think Saturday's going to be a very cagey affair. I don't think Darren Moore's going to come and open it up. And I think it's you know, but uh, I, I think we'll sneak a win against Wednesday. We'll definitely beat Doncaster. I'll be happy with a point at Accrington. We'll definitely beat Shrewsbury at home, and then we'll go and beat Cambridge. So we have put ourselves under pressure a little bit because of the start we've got. We got off to, but. It now, now feels the time that our resources should come into play, and you know we 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 should not be looking to lose. No disrespect to any of them, but like Accrington have won, lost sorry, Accrington have lost three of their last four, and um, all the games that Accrington have won this season have been by one goal against Cambridge and against Doncaster and against someone else. So. so a decent team, Atkinson. They they bat way above their average, but we shouldn't be losing up there. So you know, let's let's see if that. But I'm with David. I think one game at a time. But we should be looking back at 13 points after those five games. Hopefully, this those won't bite us in the butt. Um, I'm sure if I did it last week, I'm sure there would have been different maybe predictions for this game. But what I, I can do. I might have I might have been slightly more caveaty about things if you'd have asked me before the Lincoln game. But I would have said exactly the same in terms of what we should be doing. Yeah. Um, mm. And I, I mean, essentially speaking, what I, if, if, if we were doing this and we, we did this all the way through last season, you know, talking about a month, and I was saying pretty much the same things with the exception of the last month of Lambert's reign, where I just went, yeah, it's good. we're going to lose everything. But broadly speaking, you look at it and, and, I mean, whether it's wild optimism or something, but you look at it and on a paper where we are, the players we've got, that should be, you know, I know football's vagary and you might end up getting 32 shots on target against 
Shrewsbury and they get a penalty, but their goalkeeper has uh, has a football manager day. But it's on. I, I would have been saying the same if we'd have lost against Lincoln. We ought to be doing that. That's what we ought to be doing. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, Bono, are you fine? He's coughing a bit there. Um, got to go over to you next. And a Mr. Positive himself. Um, I Thanks, actually went. Kids. Yeah, on the main pod, I said five wins out of five because why not? Because I'm, bu- I'm, I'm buzzing because we, we finally won a game. And I think, yeah, why not? Um, Bono, are you going to do the same? Absolutely. Well, you know what? We're at Swiss Town, aren't we? Do we ever do anything that any of us would actually like us to do? Um, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be happy with. You know what? I'd be happy with ten points. I'd be happy with nine points. But I, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna win on five. Fuck it. I mean, yeah. Come on. This team, they, this team, they're starting to gel. Get that gel out, boys. They're starting to like more together. You can finally. I mean. What what is good for us is that we are having a lot of decent feedback from everybody uh, that supports any of Paul Cook's um, former clubs. Basically, saying, "Look, give the guy time. He will he will he will do this. You will start playing brilliant. He's a great bloke. He's a great tactician, and the way he likes to play football it is fantastic. And you will love watching it. I mean, that's music to our ears, isn't it? After the last bloody 12, 13 years. I mean." Don't forget, there's there's a lot of people that I go to the football with. There's a lot of people that like stand around me. They they've only ever known Ipswich just just to be this mediocre, kind of sepia grayscale type affair, where we where we sign people that just in the like the twilight of their career that aren't doing that good. But uh, Ross, as ever, I've gone off on a tangent. Hopefully not provoked too much by the fine fine beers i had uh, in mid suffolk earlier on but yes five wins why not come on you know like david said we want to be serious about promotion we want to get the hell out of flipping league one my goodness how we how we look upon the championship with envious eyes and all the all the teams up there playing decently we just want to get out of this league just beat everybody and just like can sign them to the rubble, which is this godforsaken, very north northern. It's a very northern league, isn't it? I mean, everybody's like I've I've been looking at the away games. My my wife works weekends, uh, or or she, she works at the weekends when we're not at home. So away games for me is very very difficult. Speaking of my wife, I believe she has a Chinese takeaway for me. There that's, you go. That's, um, uh, that's so, nasty. That's just cruel. That's, that's cruel. That's, sorry. I, I've not eaten since about midday. Um, so, yeah. I mean, You mean lunchtime? You haven't eaten since lunchtime, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not eaten <not, laughs> since lunch. <laughs> it's fine, darling. Um, but, yeah, we just need to – we just – you know what? The, the team that we've got on paper, was, it, we're starting to see things just fall into place, aren't we? And, um, and it's going to be – it's going to be great. Sure, yeah. It's going to be Carol's fantastic. Carol. You're having Carol play on Saturday. Good. I'm Carol. Yeah? Yeah. Wait to the right. Do you, do you, I mean, is, 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 Carol, is Carol in front of Harper now? Yeah, yes. well, Harper, yeah, I mean, um, uh, Paul Cook has sort of admitted, really, that Harper's not a defensive midfielder. Um, I mean, physically, he's a unit and he's strong enough to do that, but maybe naturally. But he came on for the last 10 minutes and if you watch the highlights, people who didn't go, yeah, he he came on and was making forward runs, and we we almost scored he two came, goals. He came on as number ten, didn't he? Came he came on as ten, yeah, yeah, right. He, was, he looked pretty so, good. Um, he looked pretty good there, to be fair. He did, yeah, he did, yeah. Got got into good positions, crosses into the box. Their keeper makes a worldy save from um, from Fraser. Otherwise, it would have been two 0 at that point. So no, he he did all right. And uh, you know, if you've seen him play in real life, he's he is a he is a specimen, you know, he's big and he's strong and he's got some long rangy legs and a good touch. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll yet to see really where he's going to fit in properly, but I don't think we'll see him like Morsey is not going to be, I think him and Evans as a combination clearly didn't. One of them wasn't the enforcer ball winner, get out the way and elbow people. They were both kind of nice footballers, but having said that, Tom Carroll, you've just mentioned Tom. Tom Carroll isn't a very defensive, you know, get your elbows out type of midfielder. And 
he 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 just kept the ball moving you know yeah. he got the ball past it there were you know it was he was sort of the cold skews really but and he was he, dro he was dropping so deep as well he was yeah, going he was. in there and he, he was supplementing the defense yeah and where he wasn't evans took his lead and evans did the same in a way that he hasn't done before right and i i was really i mean i said before about selena but getting the best out of fraser I think that Carroll did the same with Evans is because Carroll did that thing where he dropped back into the defence and he was quite often deeper than the central defenders collecting the ball and, and recycling it. But mm. Evans was doing the same as well, which you haven't seen before. And I think that Evans took his lead in the same way. It's like, yeah. it's like those building those partnerships, isn't it? This, this, yeah, it's like, you know, certain players complement each other so you know it'll be it'll be fascinating to see really well. but, but carol definitely is a very classy player good touch good pass no, didn't give the ball away you know he, he 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 was good i am looking forward to Morsey and evans together though because they've had past success yeah 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 definitely. now yeah, i mean the thing is, yeah, sorry we said we were going on a tangent but like for example Morsey's available for tuesday night there, but would you start Morsi at home to Doncaster? Would you? I mean, I don't know if you need to start Morsi at home as a, as a as an enforcer at home to Doncaster. Now, you know it's, it's it, that's you know that's the squad we're getting back now. You know, I don't know if he's going to be useful Morsi, but I, I'm not sure. Maybe starting Morsi at home to a bottom of the table team, you know, with it's going to be it's going to be. I mean, we're lucky in a way, but it's, it's great to hear Carroll settling in well because I do like the look of him. Um, and that's, that's yeah. good to hear that maybe Harper's excelling in a different type of role. Yeah, he's a good player. Different. We're lucky with the midfield we've got there. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. forward line as well. You know, Selena, Edwards, Fraser, Wes Burns, Macaulay Bond, Joe Piggott has not even had a sniff. But I'm yeah. feeling sorry for Piggott actually because he hasn't really done a lot wrong, and um, he's. He's not getting a game at the minute, so um, not even as a sub. He didn't even play in the in the. Did he get on in the cup game? I know Norwood. Yeah, sort of yeah he did. Yeah, yeah. He did. Did he? Right. Okay. Well, the one that one that gets me is bringing Jackson on instead of Piggott against Bolton. That's the one that irritates me mostly. Yeah, it's a weird. It's a weird. Especially thing. when Bolton were so physical, you know, it's like you needed a Piggott yeah. against yeah. their their mm -hmm. defense. I wouldn't be surprised if Piggott played against Wednesday because I say I just watched all the highlights and it, Bond's good in the air, but Piggott, you know, he he'll do a job against Wednesday's defence for sure. Well, good doing good doing good to get a couple of goals as well, especially after the yeah. good season last year. What I'm also intrigued by is and sorry to I know Ross we're gonna talk about um the Wednesday preview, but Keeper seems it's an interesting one, Keeper, isn't it? Because because Cook's so quiet about injuries, you know, we've talked about the way Cook never talks about injuries. And he says, sorry, lads, I'm not talking about individual players. You know me. And it's like, OK, because Hackey wasn't even on the bench against Bolton. Was he injured or was he was he dropped completely? And then I assume Walton's injured. He was, he was so, injured, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, OK, so if Walton's fit and Hackey's fit, that's going to be another interesting choice because I'm a, kind of... You know, if, Lad, if Kladke was dropped for the error against Wimbledon in the last minute, yeah, he's, to be fair, I didn't watch him play, but he's kept a clean sheet in a win. So it'd be pretty harsh to drop him on Saturday. That'd be, that'd be a big call as well. I don't think it will. Yeah. And what we're letting five? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, what do you do? Do you, do you do you bring a bloke back who's letting five goals or do you drop a, or do you drop a permanent sign and he's kept a clean sheet in a win? Yeah, it's, uh, I is it? I, per I personally think Haladki will start. Yeah, stupid. Believe in Vass. Believe in Vass. Well, as we're talking about it, we'll, we'll get into Chef Wednesday preview now. We'll end with the strike. Um, so, well, we talking about goalkeeper. Um, I'll go over to you, Dazza. Get me your prediction and um, any other changes you would do in the eleven after the Lincoln win. I'd, I mean, I'd love it to, to to pretty much stay the same, really, from a squad point of view. I hope Coulson's injury is not bad. It was just a dead leg or something, and you know he's he's fit. Um, the only one exception is I'd love to see Edwards back. You know, um, but then who do you drop? That's the thing. You know, Burns. Burns is a great. I thought Burns was a little quiet on at the weekend. Didn't do anything wrong, but maybe he wasn't his. Um, certainly, the second half. 
Um, but the, yeah, Selena is going to be first choice now whenever he's fit. Um, Scott Fraser's a quality player. You know, we've got so many options now. So I'd, I'd, I'd keep the same squad. Certainly the back four, keep the Nancy in. Um, and I'd keep the keeper in as well. I mean, obviously we don't know the injury or whatever, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd stay with Vass. He's, he's, uh, he'll, he'll do all right. So, and as far as a result, if, you know, when we spoke about this a few weeks ago, I thought a draw, I'd, I'd have taken a draw, but I'd, I'm looking for a two nil win. That's what I'm going to predict. Two nil win. Come on, you blues. And of course, Dazza, you are top of the prediction league as we speak. So eight points so far. And uh, well, hopefully a 2 0 win would be very nice. Hmm. Hope you stay top. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. There <laughs> you go. Four yeah. uh, David, over to you then. Uh, what do you reckon? Um, you know, Dan said, you know, Sheffield Wednesday are very physical. Would you bring in Piggott? Um, Paul Cook's probably not going to change his formation. And Piggott, well, it seems he can't play up front on his own. But uh, what, what do you think? I think he could doing? play up front on his own. It's just, it's just, my, my thing with Piggott is he's a different type of player. I really like Bond because of his movement. That that's yeah. the thing for me. He he's so much more mobile, and Piggott I think is going to score goals when the ball comes into him. Whereas Piggott is somebody who creates the space um, in an in an intelligent way. Norwood sort of does it, but Norwood does it by running around a lot and just happens to make some space. Um, bon is sort of a, a step up from Norwood, and the fact that he makes makes that movement and creates the space because he's got the intelligence to do it. Yeah. I think that. Pig would be some undoubtedly a worthwhile player to bring on at some point, but I'd start Bond undoubtedly. I mean, he's got he's got the goals, um, he's in form, so he starts. I mean, my my general rule, you, know, you go back previous seasons. I hate rotation. I hate unnecessary changes. If you were playing well, you stay in the side, and if it doesn't matter if you're if you're say Humphreys came in for a game in the league and he did really well and Morsi was out because he'd been injured or he'd pick up a knock or he'd been suspended Humphreys plays he keeps he keeps Morsi out after that because he's played really well that for me is is the way it goes the only possible exception is your captain you know if, if you've got a captain then they you you can understand why you might want that player to come straight back in but generally you play well, you keep your side, keep your place in the side, and that, that keeps everybody on their toes. So I, broadly speaking, go the same same squad, same, same team. My one, the only one I'd be wondering about is Edwards in, in place of Fraser. Because although Fraser had, it, had a better game, to my mind, against Lincoln, his, and his movement was better, he doesn't have that pace. And if you're talking about a physical side, that tends to be a bigger side as well. And pace to get past somebody is something which, you know, to just push that ball and, and stretch them and pin them back. I'd be inclined if he's fit to put Edwards in for Fraser, but it would be a really, really tight one. The rest of it, I'd just stick with exactly the same. They played well. Um, if Morsi was available, I'd really consider putting him in. Um, I suspect he's the club captain in waiting, mm. um, but he's not available, so it doesn't doesn't come into it. But for me, the side stays the same, with the possible exception of Edwards for Fraser. Um, and three nil. Score um, on a choice. At some point, we'll get it. I've been predicting it for four years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is the way. Um, six. Cool. You know, it's going to be. A massive crowd there. Um, as David said, sometimes when that happens, we, we bottle it and we don't get the win. Um, but do you think it will, just, it will add that extra pressure? And of course, the fans, the players will love playing in front of that big crowd. What, what are you expecting from Saturday? It possibly might add a bit of pressure, but I don't think we could look into it too much. I mean, it's a new era now after the start. Yeah. But, um, and completely new set of players. You know, it, it's not the same set of players bottling it in front of the big crowds we've had before, not, is it? It's not the Evans era anymore, is it? It's, it's got to turn at some point. Soon we've got to start winning on Sky and just beating all these other old whatever it was beforehand. So, but yeah, um, I don't think he'll change it too much. I, I don't really see why he needs to. Um, you know, the Lincoln, the side that beat Lincoln, did all right, more than all right. So there's no real need to change it. If Colson's not fit after Saturday, then you put Penny in, obviously. 
Um, that's the one change that I would make if need be. And the other one is just is the uh, Fraser and Carl Edwards baby uh, defeat uh, debate. Sorry. Um, obviously, if Carl's fit, you possibly could put him back in. But then Fraser had a good game last week and linked well with Selena, so there's a chance that you could possibly change those around. But I don't really see the need to. Um, you could bring keep Edwards as a kind of a super sub, let's say, and bring him on 60th minute or so. Or change the game a bit if you need to. Um, that's what I'd do. So the only change I'd make really is is the penny option if you have to. Um, it all depends on Colson. Um, I know I said earlier, um, sort of a point minimum, but I do predict a win. I'll go. I don't think I'll keep. A, I don't think i keep a clean sheet. Um, I think we two one, two one to town. But a win is all we need. I don't care what the result is as long as you get that win. So carry on, carry on pushing on, building on from last week. That's all that matters. Yeah, can I make it back to back wins, Dan? What do you reckon? Um, yeah, I think I would probably keep the same team as everyone's kind of said. I think Edwards, if he's fit, I'd like, I think, not a bad option to have off the bench. Um, I think that, the, yeah, maybe, yeah, Penny for, um, Penny for Coulson. Um, I mean, it's incredible to think that we haven't even mentioned Connor Chaplin, who this time last year was voted the best player in the championship. So... You know, the squad on paper is getting a bit silly. If we, you know, if you think about it, but we we've just got to win. And I think it, you know, we've re- Lincoln was brilliant and it was vital, but it's even more vital. I think that we get something on Saturday. I don't think it's going to be easy. Um, Sheffield Wednesday were in a bit of a rut, but they went they beat Rotherham away this season two 0 But they're there for the taking. You know, they're bringing a lot of fans, but they're under a bit of pressure. You know, it can it can go both ways. So um, I think it will be tight. I'm going to go one nil Macaulay Bond, and you can get twenty five to one for that. Ooh. Which I think yeah. is quite nice. Which I'm not advocating betting, by the way, listeners. So one wine gum wins you twenty five wine gums. <laughs> I love it. Um, And, you know, Bono, it's the battle of the heavyweights in League One. You know, both of us, big clubs, big histories. um, And this will be a big game. Um, We both started the season not very well. Um, Sheffield Wednesday actually did start the season well. Uh, Four wins in all four games unbeaten at the start of the season. No goals conceded. But the last three games, they've not done well. They lost actually away at Morecambe, which is not a good result there. Um, What do you reckon then, my friend? Are they going to... Is this a start of a run? Absolutely. I mean, um, I've been in contact this week with um, a Sheffield Wednesday friend of mine, and she said they're completely unpredictable and will probably lose, um, which kind of fills me fills me full of confidence. However, if somebody would have asked us about two or three games ago how, how Ipswich would play, I'd probably said the same thing. So um, we just need to keep the momentum going. Um, like the guys have said, why change a winning team? It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like an unwritten rule in football, isn't it? You don't change a a winning team unless you absolutely have to. So unless there's like injuries barring and that kind of thing, we uh, we won't need to. Coulson, you know, we'll we'll get Penny in for him. It's a like for like swap. I really like Penny. I think the the white ankle strapping helps a lot with with that kind of admiration that I have. Um, but there's no need to go dicking around with the team. We've, we're, I mean, oh God, like the last two, three, four years, we've seen so much rotation and so much kind of changing of the team. It's kind of, you know, you kind of just get sick and tired of it. And, you know, you get this idea in your head about what the team's going to be. And you just turn up and it's like, you know, Brett McGavin being thrown in against bloody yeah. Fleetwood at home. And it's just like, oh, my God. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Even if if Walton is fit, you know, like I said before, he comes from a wholesome family, but I wouldn't put him in goal. Um, you know, Hadkey uh, had had a, had a great game. Um, is that you know, a reference to the Waltons? Waltons. Oh God! If it's <laughs> if if you have to, ex- what's it? If, to it's, if you have to explain <laughs> a joke, it's not funny. <laughs> Excuse my French. Just checking, you'd said that deliberately. 
Oh, absolutely. I, I don't know his family, but you know, I, I'm I'm guessing that they're 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 pretty wholesome and they play acoustic guitars, much like myself. Yeah. Um, one, one of I his think... most talented um, siblings is uh, John Boy, isn't it? John Boy, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and on that note, it's a it's a good night for me. Um, <laughs> only only kidding. Um, I think that's a great point um, by by Segs. It's it's nice to agree with 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 Thomas for once. Apropos Carl Edwards, um, absolutely, he would be uh, a wonder sub. Um, you know, the tiring Sheffield Wednesday, the aging Sheffield Wednesday legs in the 70th minute. Bring on Carl Edwards just to do that disco dance that he's got and that absolutely sublime kind of West Midlands kind of silky voice that he has. Just, in fact, I say silky voice. Has anybody heard him talk? I think I have. Yeah, I mean, I, he did I, that I, coffee thing, didn't he? With yeah, where he was, he was really loud, and then Edmonds mm -hmm. was just moderate, and then Chapman was really, really quiet. What That's was really quiet. annoying me was the they had the left and right microphones the wrong yeah. way round. Yeah. So in my ear, it was in my right ear, but but Carl Edwards was on the left. Yeah. It was like scrambled. I did not like that at all. That's Edmonds almost as all. That's almost like a like a Paul Lambert kind of inverted winger. Who's on the left? Who's yeah. on the right? We we don't know, but we're gonna we're don't gonna know. muddle through because hey, a game is only an hour and a half. But yeah, I mean, as as, as I was saying before, um, Daza kind of went on to that segue. Um, <laughs> Edwards would be. Out. Can you imagine like him? Like, can you imagine being a defender and seeing his number being put up on the side and him kind of like. Like running on, like in the, in that kind of lovely running style that he's got, and it's like, oh my god, this this guy's gonna absolutely like mess around with us. I was gonna swear, but I'm not David. Um, so um... <laughs> yeah, when I was watching the highlights, they conceded half of their goals were a winger on the left hand side, so their right back just had was put on put on his ass basically and crosses in goal, which is just yeah. Edwards would just rinse yeah. him. And if you follow him on Insta. He did go out of the weekend, all glammed up with his tracksuit and glowy, clean trainers. Ooh. So hopefully that means he's not far away. My man. If he's, if he's going out, you know. My man. <clears throat> so well. I really, I have to say, I have to say, I really like the combination of, um, of kind of, um, what's his name? Tom Carroll, who, when he played against West Ham reserves, I say reserves, they're not really an under 21s team, are they? The reserves. I actually thought he was a youth player, and like somebody he's else tiny. in the stands. Oh, he's, yeah. he's, abs he's he's like he's like minuscule. Yeah. Um, but he is so the way that he reads the game, and I actually sat in in the wide block. I didn't have a view from the U two. I had a view from the wide block, the padded seats. I was up amongst the gods, in around the gods of all these retired players, and and Stuart Watson and uh, and Andy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No Ross to be seen. I think he had a day off that day. Um, but the way that he reads the game, he's literally, I think, didn't QPR, didn't a fanzine like describe him as like a bit of a ball recycler. So give him the ball, he gives it away. He's so good at that, like, like getting the ball and then passing it. And he, he doesn't, he doesn't mess around. Yeah. I just think he, he is actually so good the way that his brain is wired. He's so good. Like he, he's about like one or two steps ahead of like, of our guys. But I think we will kind of get channeled into him. So I actually think like Carol, could actually be quite key for us. It's just finding that balance of Evans, Rakeem the Dream, Morsey, Hail to the King, you know, all, all that kind of thing. And and Selena, where where do you put Selena in all this? Well, right, you know what? I was thinking that, and like what you just said, Dazza, about their right back being a bit iffy is. Mm. I, there may, is will there be a positional change against Wednesday? I do feel that Fraser's more a number ten than a left wing. Yeah, he's, he's you, got no you, you, saw, you saw him at Lincoln, but. If their right back is a bit pants, then uh, get Selena on the left, maybe. Yeah, but then again, know. then again, what we talked about with Lincoln, David and I both said it is if you change Fraser and Selena over frequently during the game, yeah. that's going to yeah. cause them trouble. Yeah. yeah, and that that was happening, was it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Burns was really narrow as well. That was quite noticeable, certainly in the first half. Um, yeah, there was Burns was basically playing up front for most of it, and yeah, it was. Uh, but that's yeah, the other anyway. thing. Selena was quite often more advanced than Bon as well. Selena was in that number ten. He kept being almost yeah. the striker. 
which yep. I like. I, I've been really impressed with Burns. I know he's gone under the radar a bit in some ways, but I think he's 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 been excellent this season so far, he, yep. even with the um, form and stuff. One is work rate, but the, the way in which he um, operates and controls that 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 right midfield area, I, I've been really impressed. He's 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 for me so far the most consistent success we've had. Yeah, so there. I mean, Lincoln. I didn't know this before the game, but so Lincoln, their left winger is meant to be their guy, right? Their number eleven was meant it's to be their big threat. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, between Burns and Denancy, and not a lot happened down their left wing at all. So um, it was more more their right wing actually. But um, Darren, I love the way that you put an extra N in the yeah, Denancian. I know that's in, far. Into into Denancian's what did I say? name. Denancian. Denancian. Denantian, yeah. It's Denashian. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've spent too much time with Ross. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Denashian. Denashian, so not yeah. Denan not Denantian. Denashian. Uh, no, Apologies. No. Apologies to, to the man. Yeah, I'll get it I'll get it right from now on. So Bono, your prediction. What are you going for? I'll let you eat your whatever you're eating. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> 4-1, Ipswich Town. Come on. What a game that will be. What a game. I might go. I might go to you, your You're game. stealing that prediction from John, aren't you? Yeah, you've, you've been, yeah. been yeah, so only, too much. That's because I'm really looking forward to seeing big John Watson again. Yeah, John Watson's making his way down to Portman Road on Saturday. Looking forward to that. Um, well, any other business before we get into the strike? Are we happy with what we've said about the Sheffield Wednesday game? Yep. I am. Well, let's get into the strike. I will we'll play the intro now. If you're watching it on the video, there'll be a quick little pause. There we go. The intro is played. Beautiful as ever. Um, well, get your notepads at the ready. Get your pens at the ready. Dan, of course, won the ultimate strike invitational. Um, he had an absolute blinder of a competition. Um, Dan has written, written books about Ipswich Town. Can we just mention that? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's slightly unfair. I can feel he, you lot gunning for me now. Equally, equally talented as he is handsome. So you know, it's thank you, mate. I'll give you a fiver in the greyhound on Saturday. Yeah. Good old yeah. boy. <laughs> well, um, we've got five questions, and the five questions is on the game against Sheffield Wednesday. So it will be a mix of um, well, games against them and former players, and also Matt Penny. Um, so question one, and this is closest. Let me just get the answers up quickly before I have a mare here. Um, so the questions will appear at the bottom uh, for you guys. And if you're watching on video, you'll see that as well. So play at home. Play at home if you're listening on audio as well. So question one is how many games have Town won against Sheffield Wednesday in 53 meetings? And um, whoever gets close to the correct answer gets the point. So, yeah, 53 That's meetings. Question. That's a good question. That's just a standard one, isn't it? It's a great 53 question, <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Yeah, 53 meetings. All right then. Whenever you're ready, A1 show. Oh, so Seven, that is 17. 17. 17. Average Nine, age of a combat veteran in 18, Vietnam. I'm very small. 19. 19, oh, 19. <laughs> Are you on What's royalties that? with that song or something? <laughs> <laughs> 25. Ooh. Well, the correct answer. Is twenty. Ooh. So who who went nineteen? Segs and Segs and Bono. Come on. So one one for those you guys got question two to get back. That's not bad. The lead. That's not bad. Question two is on a man who currently plays Sheffield Wednesday, a former town loanee in Dominic Iorfa. Uh, how many games did he play during his loan spell? Ooh, at too many. I liked him. I liked him. He scored one goal, of course, to go against Sunderland. Um, and apparently he's the main man at the back for... He, 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 he wasn't Jordan Spence, but really. Um, yeah, I, think, I think he's improved since he played for us. Um, I think I think Sheffield Wednesday fans are actually surprised he's still there. They thought a championship club would have maybe signed him. Are you including sub-appearances? Yep, all competitions, sub-appearances and all that jazz. How many games? <laughs> I'm going to start break dancing. Where's this come from? Oh, <laughs> a bit of a music interlude. 
for uh, as we wait for the answers. Okay. Are so you I did ready? a caterpillar. I haven't written down anything yet. I'm I got distracted. Um, well, we'll start. Uh, we'll start with Segs and Bono as they're in the lead. So show us your 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 result. Twenty two. I went twenty five. Twenty five. And then go whenever now. Twenty six. Twenty five again, Dan. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. I'm going to keep wow. my my first answer and just keep it for the second answer. Okay. Well, that was a good idea to do that because it is 25 bang yes. on. The sex oh, makes it two. Sex is on one. fire. He is on fire. Give him some okay. Question three is on Matt Penny. Of course, he was formerly at Sheffield Wednesday, where he joined us from Sheffield Wednesday for a free transfer. Uh, once again, a very boring question, but how many games did Matt Penny play for Sheffield Wednesday? Oh, gosh. So, yeah. He was there a few years, but he was on loan for a year, wasn't he? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Matt Penny. Yeah. Of course, the question will be if, if Colson is still injured, I'm sure Matt Penny will come in against his former side. I'm ready. Right. I'm right. ready. Show okay. us the money. Big 3 0. 17, is that Matt? I went, 17. I've probably gone too many. I went 49, but I don't know. 49. That's fine. David and Dan. What have we gone for? 32? No, 53. 53, 32. Well, one person is bang on, and that is 32. Oh! So, Dan. Have we got an adjudicator in his room that he's not searching Wikipedia? Um, <laughs> I've got, got, got a lot of buttons for that. He's getting them like spot on. Matt Penny, then go on to his Wikipedia, then scroll the down. second one was luck. That was, that was genius. Yeah, that was brilliant. All right, question four is on Tony Mowbray, who won his only game in charge of town as a caretaker against Sheffield Wednesday in 2002. But what was the score? Oh Once God. again, you just got to guess, and whoever gets it right gets the point. If you don't get it, if none of you get it right, then yeah. Was anyone there? Two. Is anybody there? Yeah, two thousand two. I, I wasn't there. I don't think I was. Yeah, that was in. That was in the. Yeah, it must have been. No, no. I've been between Burley and George Burley and Royal, yeah. wasn't it? Royal, yeah. yeah. So the, the Division know. One, Division One. So I think the season first season back after getting was relegated. It, was it at Portman Road? Yeah, at Portman Road. Yeah. Uh, I I three been, games. Was it three games. He had all four games. Four games. 2 1, 2 1, 3 0, 1 0. 2 0. 2 0. Well, Pablo Canago scored a brace that day, and um, Dan and Segs are spot on. It is 2 1. Dan, you can get in the bin, mate. You're cheating. What's going on? I'm in level. Yeah, Dan, Dan and Sega level with 3-3. Free, free. Um, so going into the final question. Um, so sadly, David, Dazza and... No computer. Could no computer, Dazza. <laughs> there we go. Okay, he hasn't okay, got his Okay, okay, I take he's it just back. just got his books that he's written. You are innocent. So, all right, question five is... Who scored a brace against Sheffield Wednesday in the 4-1 win at Portman Road in 2007? I do have options. Is it Pablo Canago, Alan Lee, or John Walters? Still Ooh. play Dazza and David. Still play. Three good connect. Yeah, three good players. Yeah. This is when I stopped going on ship switch. Was this Majilton? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if if Dan and Segs get this right, then there is a tiebreaker. Um, I have got that uh, one. Seven. seven. Who would it have been? Can I go Lee or Walters? No, what? no what? I'll guess that. Okay. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. Gone Lee. Okay. Alan Lee. Go. go. Walters, Lee, Walters. Bono is right. It's Alan Lee. And Dazza. Got the brace. Hello, can I go scored? Gary Roberts scored that day. Oh, sorry, Dazza. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Gary Roberts is offering. Yeah. And, um, Thank you. Yeah, so one, um, right. oh, a tiebreaker is needed then. So here we go. Ooh. Brace yourself. 
And play at home, you know, still play. Dazza, David and, you know, Bono still it's play. Just, it's just not winner takes all then. It's just between them two. Um, okay. No, I think, yeah, I think that's a bit harsh. I did that one week. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you get it, wait, if you get it spot on, if Sex and Dan is happy with this, if you get this question spot on, you know, you can be the winner. But I don't know if you will. It's one of those yeah, questions. Throw, throw it open to everyone, but me yeah. and Sex can have a head to head. Yeah. Yeah. No so how many goals have been scored in the wow. So 53 meetings. Bloody hell. Um, I think there was 20 wins, 20 defeats, and 13 draws. What was um, that say? 20 wins. 20 defeats and 13 just, I'm just using a calculator. This is not... <laughs> it's tight, isn't it? Our record is well tight against them. Yeah, really against them, yeah. Split down the middle. But, you know, I've, I've, I've told you two results, 4-1 and 2-1. So that's, uh, that's, nine, that's nine goals, I think. Okay, I have an answer. No, that's not nine goals. That's eight goals. <laughs> How, many How many fixtures? How many fixtures? 53. 53. I don't know why I call it meetings. I think it's just, I don't know. You can call it posh. games. A bit posh. A bit Meetings. Posh. <laughs> Meetings. Well, um, Affairs. Well, I'll get... But I won't... Segs and Dan, you wait for a sec. I want to see if Dazza, right. David and Bon, I want to see theirs, and then I'll get you you guys to show yours. So Dazza, go up first. And this is for, for both of us, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, 185. 185. Yeah. 5 That's bold. Yeah. 177, 153. Okay. okay. No, 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 no. I am. Segs, you go first, my friend. Yeah. 115. Oh, okay. it's close. Right, Dan, what are you going for? 122. The correct answer is 142. Okay. So Dan wins Dan overall. Wins. Um, oh. someone, Who, someone must have got nearer. Or? That wasn't nearest. Who got nearest? Yeah, but who got nearest to one four two? What'd you get there, Matt? I did one hundred and fifty-three, which is oh, good there effort. Go. Oh, David, David got that. David I, David I got one one, one one seven seven. Okay. There we go. Well, there we go. Dan has won the strike again. Um, well done, Dan. Well done, Dan. Round for another week. Um, and that's been another edition of The Strike. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I have a new outro by the boy Alkin Baggett. Uh, not Baggett, yes. as I used to always call him. So oh, over to you, Alkin. The future. There we go. Thank you, Alkin. Um, if you listened as audio, you would have heard that. On video, you didn't. So, sorry. Uh, yeah. I've, what's um? That's just quickly. What was your Chinese takeaway order? What's your go-to? Um, so my wife and I are both plant based, so we, it's very, very boring. So it's just like um, bean sprouts and vegetables, but no animals died or suffered in the uh, in, in our sustenance. So hey, we we win the moral okay. high ground. There you go, you'll still there you go. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's nice. That's yeah, nice. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on before we have a debate on vegan you said, and based stuff. I'm, uh, I'm very passionate about Chinese food. Yes. We would be here uh, a long time. We'd be here for a long time. But um, it's been a pleasure, lads. No, Dad, I, when, David. Uh, oh. uh, when he said plant based, I just immediately thought Bill and Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think that's I'm, 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 I'm amazed. There. I'm amazed. Sex hasn't mentioned my um. My, 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 the story about me saying hello to him as I drove past him and his um, the future Mrs. Seggs in it. Why is why, why is it mentionable? Because it was, I thought it was good. Taskmaster <laughs> <laughs> started tonight, Bonnie. I thought, you know, I've got a bit of pressure for time. <laughs> oh, get you. <laughs> okay, I think we should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be continued. We'll see you next week. Um, but Dazza, David, Segs, Dan, and Bono, it's been a pleasure. And um, of course, the podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. So use the code KOA at manscaped.com to get 20% off and free delivery. And of course, a new Warzy um, theatre player I've never lost at home, uh, which I know Segs has gone to. I'm really, sure really good. you guys will go. You, did you enjoy it, Segs? Yeah, yeah, really good. Um, met Mick Mills afterwards as well, which was a nice experience. Yeah, um, he looks really small. I saw your selfie, and he's about a foot a smaller selfie. than you. It wasn't a selfie. I wasn't standing there like that. It was a, someone took it for right. me. One Ipswich yeah. legend to another. Yeah. No. Yeah. It was. Um. 
Do yeah. you think Mick Mills is telling everybody that he's met Segs from Kings of Anglia? I think so. <laughs> but I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, Sigs. No. I saw Brenner at, at Lincoln now. I saw Brenner. Um, he was, I come not we some random street and I told him then I met his mate there. Met the night before. So, uh, but yeah, um, no, if, seriously though, if you get a chance, go and see it. It's really, really good. Definitely. Well, Thank let's go on to this Saturday at Portman Road. Sheffield Wednesday are in town. Can town make it back to back wins? We'll be back next week. Of course, look out for game day. I'm sure a lot of these faces will be on game day on Saturday. And yeah, we'll be back next week on the fan social to hopefully bring some more positivity. I know last week was a bit negative. So hopefully this has been a, a little bit of a, a happier one. So uh, we'll be back next week. We'll see you then. Bye for now.